In nature, it's often thought that the biggest and the strongest are the ones that get to extend their lineage through mating. But every now and then, every now and then, the sneaks get their treats. Hey YouTube, this is Tech Tech. I hope you're doing well by now as you're watching this. I'm in Florida enjoying a nice vacation. But I wanted to shoot this video because I came across something interesting. If you watch the vlogs and other things, you might know that I've been walking a lot and listening to podcasts. And one of the podcasts I was listening to today touched upon this topic that happens really often in biology. It's a, it's a term coined sneaky fuckers. This term was thought to be coined by evolutionary biologist John Maynard Smith. This was a term made to describe a process through which subdominant males uh, take advantageous steps to mate with females while the dominant males are otherwise occupied. There are examples of this all throughout the animal world, but I'm going to focus on aquatic species. Probably one of the coolest and best examples of this is the giant cuttlefish. Now, giant cuttlefish can tell male from female by the color and texture of their skin, as well as their tentacles and the way their tentacles are arranged. When a female is interested in a male cuttlefish, she'll take her tentacles and squish them all together and just, it's a way of saying, hey, I like your style. Then the male sort of guides the female underneath him and he'll guard her from any other males that come around, often with violence. If you're a small subdominant male, you've got absolutely zero chance of getting to this female in the normal circumstances. So what some males do is they'll take their tentacles and they actually arrange them so they look like a female who's interested. And so the male thinks, wow, I got two females interested in me. And he guides the sneaker underneath. And while he's there guarding the new happy couple, things happen and those eggs are fertilized by a subdominant male. This will happen with octopus too. The male will exhibit very clear male coloration. And the females have a different coloration. But the sneaker guys can kind of disguise themselves as the females based on color and texture, kind of sneak past the male who won't fight them, thinking there's just another female around. And when he's not looking, he'll slip that hectocotylus right in. Sneakers win. Subdominant sneaker sand gobies will hang out real close to a nest, and then when the male's not looking, he'll sneak in there and fertilize as many eggs as he can before he gets chased off. The smallest males of one specific marine isopod species makes up for a small size by having an increase in sperm. So while the dominant male isopod and the female isopod are laying eggs and getting ready to finish their mating ritual, that smaller male will come in and dive bomb both of them with sperm and then take off. Ah, the beauty of the animal kingdom. In the scientific community, the most laboratory studied fish is probably the zebra fish. And one study found that the subdominant males were able to get between the males and the females when the egg laying process happens. Now the closer you are to the eggs, the better chance you have of fertilizing them. And the smaller guys are just able to maneuver in just that way to get what they need to get done. Sneaker! Another example is an East African cichlid from Lake Tanganyika that I can't pronounce the name of. Now in this one, the dominant males are huge and the subdominant males are quite small. A really huge difference. And the subdominant males can be up to 40 times smaller than the dominant males. The way this fish procreates is it gathers lots and lots of shells and it invites the females in to lay eggs inside these shells. So the big fish can carry lots of shells and create huge nests. The thing is he can't fit inside the shells. So to get his sperm to those eggs, he employs what we call in video games, the spray and pray method. That is, he's outside the eggs trying to get his sperm inside. But the small subdominant males can scoot in right there next to the female, either hide inside the shell or get in there while the female's still in there, insert his sperm directly to the eggs, and then take off. And ho oh, ho, that is sneaky. There have been similar studies that have covered this with other types of cichlids too. And a lot of times the, the couple will just be laying eggs and going through their cycle, and then a smaller guy just kind of comes in, dive bombs, and then runs away as fast as he can. Now granted, this isn't the most successful way to procreate, so those dominant males do continue in with their bloodline. That small percentage of sneakers is always going to be there too. That's all I got for you today, folks. Something kind of funny, kind of fun, and kind of fishy I found on the internet and I wanted to share with you guys. Until next time, follow your bliss, 
keep a clean tank, and do the sneaky sneaky. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. There are examples of this all throughout the animal, animal world. <laughs> once the, however, once that sneaker octopus is in the world, they extend their lineage through mating and, uh, Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech by now. I'm well. It, hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech and by now I'm. And I was listening to one called. That's not the name of it. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech and how are you? <laughs> and it describes a process where subordinate or subdominant males uh, take advent.